Good morning and welcome to our celebration of the eighth Sunday in Ordinary Time. My name is Father Andy Pavlik. I'm the pastor of San Felipe de Neri in Old Town, Albuquerque, and I'm being assisted today by Deacon Bob Moro, also of San Felipe. My friends, let's begin marking ourselves with the sign of our faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our need for God's love and mercy in our lives. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace, peace to people, people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your church may rejoice, untroubled in her devotion, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Zerach. When a sieve is shaken, the husks appear. So do one's faults when one speaks. As the test of what the potter molds is in the furnace, so in tribulation is the test of the just. The fruit of a tree shows the care it has had. So too does one's speech disclose the bent of one's mind. Praise no one before he speaks, for it is then that people are tested. The Word of the Lord. Planted in the house 
of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when this which is corruptible clothes itself with incorruptibility, and this which is mortal clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death? is your victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be firm, steadfast, always fully devoted to the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher, but when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, brother, let me remove that splinter in your eye, when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye? You hypocrite, remove the wooden beam from your eye first then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. A good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For people do not pick figs from thorn bushes, nor do they gather grapes from brambles. A good person out of the store of goodness in his heart produces good, but an evil person out of a store of evil produces evil. From the fullness of the heart the mouth speaks. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Again, now we're standing here on the precipice, aren't we? This is the last 
Sunday in our ordinary time before we begin the great and holy, and I always introduce this next week or as Ash Wednesday begins to approach upon us as a happy Lenten season. So um, next week uh, I'll be wishing all the people happy Lent, and often they look at me like I'm strange, but it really will be a, hopefully a, a, a season of preparation and anticipation for Easter to come. But we're not there yet. We still have a lot. Of, Jesus is doing a lot of work today. Did you hear how much he's trying to pack into this one section of Luke's gospel? And we're going to go right to the heart of what he's talking about here, kind of carrying on with what he talked about last week, where the themes are kind of continuing about the whole judging thing that we had last week. We're also hearing now, do you not notice the wooden beam in your own eye? Before you see the splinter in your brother or sister's eye, take out the beam from your eye so that you may see clearly. Hmm. So often we are looking for the splinter in someone else's eye. We're noticing someone else's foibles. We're noticing someone else's limitations. When in essence we have so many of our own that we need to address ourselves. Yes, the Lenten season is the time when we can deal with the hypocrisies that exist in our own lives. Yes, the Lenten season gives us an opportunity to, to reflect on whether or not our fruit coming from our tree is good or is it rotten. We need to think about and prepare ourselves to deal with the brambles that are our lives and clear away all those weeds and those thorns so that the good grapes can come forth. My friends, we realize that there's evil in the world. We know without looking too very far away from our very own homes and families and houses that we need to be people who take Jesus' message and do something serious about it. We need to take the blindnesses that we have and cast them aside. We need to take those beams that are laying deeply within our eyes and remove them so that we can see clearly. Why is it that we do this? Why is it that we're so quick to be able to see the small problems in our brothers and sisters and yet can't address the issues in our own lives? Maybe it's because we're not honest with ourselves. Maybe it's because, you know, we are kind of in a world of complacency that says, well, I'm, I'm, I'm bearing good fruit. I'm fine. We live in a kind of a euphoric, nonsensical place that, that isn't really true. So as we look forward to Lent in just a few days beginning, as we hopefully have now brought in all of our blessed palms from last year or previous year so they can be turned into the ashes, that we'll put on our, our, our heads at the beginning of the Lenten season in just a few days, maybe it's time to start thinking about where it is we need to work on ourselves. Yes, we have beams in our eyes. Yes, we might be blind. Yes, we might not be bearing the great fruit that God asks of us. But in our lives, each of us has an opportunity every day to review those challenges that God gives to us. And may we, who are God's people, truly embrace the reality of what that is all about so that we too will produce the good fruit, we will address the evil that's in our world, and we will listen for the great greatness that comes from our God as we grow as God's family each and every day. My dear friends, I ask you, what do you believe? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven 
and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We believe that the Lord is attentive to our prayers. Let us pray now for the needs of our brothers and sisters. For the church, that we may have the courage and integrity to remove the wooden beams that lead to sin and hypocrisy and in, impede our ability to, to teach and preach the good news, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our government leaders, that they may treat their constituents with fairness and justice as they serve them in office. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live in areas of the world threatened by rising ocean levels, especially those without the means to relocate, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For trees, plants, and all living things that grow in the earth, that they may be healthy and bear fruit in due time, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Archdiocese of Santa Fe, Archbishop John Wester, priests, religious, and laity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of our community that are in need of prayer and whose intentions are contained in this basket, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of goodness and light, teach us your wisdom as you lead us on the path to holiness. Grant this and all our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for all the Church. O God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant as the source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed, by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim...
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John Charles, our Bishop. Michael, our retired bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostle San Felipe, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace to you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. 
My dear sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Archdiocese of Santa Fe Catholic Schools. Faith in Education. We are 15 elementary schools, St. Michael's and St. Pius X High School. Proven academics. 99% of our high school graduates attend college. Our schools are communities. Small class sizes and activities that bond students. Catholic values and traditions. Theology and community service programs. More affordable than you think. Have faith. In Catholic Education. Archdiocese of Santa Fe Catholic Schools. Learn more today.